And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're talking about Somnikum, um, the guardian of the magical sand, the keeper of the keys of the night, the mare caves, and the master of all dreams. The Sandman has disappeared. You are now the person giving dreams. And if you are the person giving dreams, for crying out loud, give me dreams where I'm not paying bills or I uh, forgot to, got fired from my job even though I'm, I'm my own boss. It's very confusing. So, uh, dreams are crazy, right? We all have crazy dreams and this game is about making dreams. Eh, okay, this game's actually about matching symbols on sets and trying to get them. But that doesn't mean it's a bad game. And in fact, the whole dream thing is being used in a lot of games these days because it's a pretty good theme to add to a game. Let's take a look at this one. In Somnicum, you're going to have cards that are different dreams. So you have different dreams as like an outer space dream, an underseas dream here, and a fantasy dream. Each There's three different colors of dreams. You can see them here. Each dream has various elements in it. The more elements it in, the, the fewer points it will be at the end of the game. See, this one only has one, but it could be worth three points. Um, some some uh, dreams will give you a, a special card that you'll be able to use. And then there's also nightmares. Nightmares are actually negative points, but they have a lot of elements in them, so sometimes they're useful to put in your dream. Now, the game is all about scoring your own dream. And so it's always good to talk about scoring at the beginning of the game. As you play this game, you're going to be building a dream. And when you build a dream, you have to have elements that are the same. So if you look here, for example, as I build this dream, I have two ships here. So these can be connected to each other. And then these can be connected to each other because they have a mermaid. Um, once I have enough cards in this first level, I can even start a second level, again, following the rules of connecting things, and get down to a third level. But there needs to be, they're kind of offset like this. At the end of the game, this particular one would score me one, two, three, four points for the top row, one, two, three, four, five times two, so ten points for the second row, and one, two, three times three, nine points here for the third row. Now, as the game goes by, you might get nightmare cards uh, that you have to play into your, you know, setup. And if you have a nightmare card, it's going to be worth minus points times the level of the row it's in. You also might be, as time goes by, forced to have a card that causes a break. So maybe, for example, let's see if I can find one here. I played this one here, oh no, or this one here. This one does not have the octopus, oh, has the bottle. Ah. So let's say this is here. These don't have anything in sync, so there would be a break in the dream. Both cards next to a break do not score you the points that they would normally give you. So you. Um, but most of the games I've played in, there's been very few breaks in dreams, but it is possible. There's also these special cards you can get over the course of the game. If you don't use them, they're one point each. And at the beginning of the game, each player gets a special secret card. This will give you one point for each of these. So in this particular dream, I have one octopus, so that's a point. No dragons, but I have two of these lightning clouds, so that's two. Three more bonus points for me. So now let's look at how you actually play the game. There's also a bag of dream particles in this game, and these are going to be various of the symbols that are shown on the different cards. At the beginning of a player's turn, they can, if they have a dream in front of them, they can place one of these dream particles on it to add that to the dream. So now this has that windmill along with that knight. Um, if I want to add it to a different color, and you can connect different colors together. You can do that, but you would have to pay two of them. So I put one on the card and put the other one back in the bag. So that way it's possible to connect dreams of different colors. Now you're gonna start with these two pawns out here. A white pawn, one person picks where it goes, the black pawn goes directly across from it. On your turn, you're gonna move one of these pawns clockwise. You can go one, two, or three for free. If you wanna go farther than that, you need to play a dream particle back to the bag for each space you move. Depending on how far you move, you get dream particles. If you move one, you get two dream particles. If you get if you move two, you get three dream. I mean, you get one dream particle, and if you move three or more, you get nothing. After you're done moving, the card that you end up on is the card you take and you add to your dream. 
That's it. It's that simple, and you'll keep going until all the cards, there's very few cards left, or till the two pawns meet somehow. At that point, you will deal out the cards and start another round. And at the end of uh, three rounds, then the game is going to end, and you're going to score the dreams like I showed you. Now, if you ever take a card that has the special symbol on it to give you, where's one here? This gives you basically a special card. You'll draw one of these special cards off the top here. These cards are worth a point at the end of the game if you don't use them, but they can also be kind of useful. Like this one here, put up the 10 magical sand tokens from your pool on this card as soon as you play it. Don't discard this card. Get one point for every two tokens on it at the end of the game. Here, swap two cards lying next to each other in the same layer of your dream. Don't move the breaks if there are any. Once per turn, you can replace one of your magical sand tokens with a random token from the bag. Put the, so if as this uh, infinity symbol you can play in front of you and it gives you a special ability. You may put any nightmare cards next to your good dream cards without breaking your dream. So nightmare cards are even better. Don't spend magical sand tokens when you move it four cards forward. So it's up to you to decide how useful these cards are going to be, but they can help you win or lose the game. That's how you play. So a lot of the game is going to be based on the artwork on these cards, and it's very freaky and weird artwork. I'm not completely sold on it. I know that they like this black and white artwork, but it does make you double take and look at the cards and say, does anything match? And even on these, oh wait, there's this, you know, the seaweed in the background. No, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. And I almost wish there was just a little bit more color on these cards. They're, like I said, they're, they're effectively very dreamy and dreamscapey, and the cards are fine quality. It's just that when they're out there on the board and you see them, it can kind of all can blur together. The tokens themselves are fine, um, and you know, they're just tokens, and the bag itself is a nice bag. These cards are entirely too small. I wish they had just been full size. The point cards are great, but the rest of them, these, they're hard to read. They're really tiny type. This would have been better just as a full size deck of cards. So the components for this one are okay. Okay, so that's that, right? It's a simple game of moving things around and collecting them. And yet I enjoyed this. This is in a genre that we often call set collection, where you're trying to get things. But here you're trying to get cards that match your dream. Now the ultimate goal, obviously, is to get cards that are worth a lot of points in the bottom level of your dream. To do that, you got to get the top level of the dream together. And so you pick a color to go there, and you're looking at the, the sand tokens. Each player will start with a couple sand tokens, depending on what... Uh, what your turn position is, and you can move slowly and grab cards, and over each of the rounds, you want to build up to get to that bottom level. If I can get two cards out on that bottom level, and they're both threes, that is 18 points. That's a big deal. Ah, uh, but that's not as easy to do as it might seem. So you might, you have those special cards to use, you have the sand tokens, what's the right time? I, one time I made a move where I moved the piece like eight spaces or nine spaces, just spent a whole bunch of sand tokens because there was a specific card I wanted to put in my dream at a very specific spot. And of course those cards that are more points are also harder to get in the dream because they don't match anything that came before it. It's, it's different. I don't think I played anything like this, this whole stacking the dream and matching symbols. Like I said, I wish it looked a little better, um, but even now it doesn't look bad and it has that kind of weird dream thing going on it. So that works and it, it also plays fairly quickly. I mean, the, the longest part was like setting the cards up in a row. There's 24 in a four-player game, fewer in if you play two or three. But putting those cards out in a circle, after that, you're going and moving. You're not really watching what the other players are doing as much, You're not, except when they steal the cards you need. There's not a ton of player interaction back and forth. But you're kind of caught up in this whole, I'm um, building this pyramid of a dream. And So I guess my only complaint would be that that when you're done with the dream, you don't look at it and go, ooh, let me tell you about my dream. No, it makes no sense. It's just kind of this mindless, weird dream that cartoon characters have. Uh, but uh, maybe you've had them. I, my dreams always seem to have a point, even if it's a negative one. The, uh, so the, the nightmares, sometimes you'll even stick one of those in your dream just to keep the whole thing together, although we found that we skip them more often than not because, hey, points are always better than negative points. Overall, though, it's different and different in this case is good. So whether or not you like the dream theme or not, and the cover does look kind of cool, the guy looks a little foreboding, the game itself kind of has this nice, 
It's a mechanical feeling, right? You're picking up cards and putting them in the right spot, but it has a nice ebb and flow to it as you're moving a piece and taking a card and sticking it in here and sitting there thinking the best way to score points. I like it. It doesn't outstay its welcome. It says 20 to 30 minutes. Probably goes up closer to the 30, but it's still a nice little game. Somnicum or Somnicum or however you pronounce it. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.